And now to end off the show, um, the long-awaited Elvis movie premiered in theaters. Darius and I just saw it last night as of us recording this podcast. And the film Elvis follows the life and times of the king of rock and roll, both through his point of view and that of his conniving manager, Colonel Tom Parker. Now, the thing that this movie, that anchors this movie the most are the performances. The performances are, in my opinion, terrific. And I feel like Austin Butler was absolutely incredible as Elvis Presley. I feel like he captured his swagger, his range of emotions. He just had an incredible performance, charisma. And I just feel like he really disappeared into the role. He really did. Yeah, going into Elvis, I was somewhat excited. At the same time, I kind of wasn't, mainly because I saw the runtime. And I was just like, do I really want to see this movie (laughs) for two hours and 40 minutes? But I was like, you know what? This, uh, I've done worse. <laughs> so, but yeah, for me, I thoroughly enjoyed this movie. Absolutely enjoyed it a lot. Loved it. I think, like you said, Austin Butler as Elvis was just fantastic. He definitely became Elvis, I think, at certain points. And I kind of forgot it was an actor at some times. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and... Tom Hanks, also, great job. You know, like you said, these performances overall in this movie are really freaking good, really solid. And you don't Um, expect Tom Hanks to do a villainous role usually, right? And I feel like he was unexpectedly strong in doing something like this smarmy character, mm -hmm. you know? And it's weird, like, I wasn't always sure. He kind of had, like, this role of, like, an unreliable narrator, right? And I feel like I wasn't always sure, like, where his, like, real interests were, like, what his real intentions were, like... He kind of gives you a preview of that at the beginning, but, like, you kind of see, like, certain hints of, like, you know, certain, uh, I, like I said, just, like, certain interests that he really has. Like, he kind of, it kind of toyed with me a little bit, too, to, like, not always know exactly what his motivations really were. And I feel like uh, him and Austin Butler, like, they do play really well off of each other. Yeah, they, they really do, and I really like seeing, you know, how they were telling Elvis's life. And I gotta say, I think an- another very strong aspect of this movie is really the editing. Yes. They oh have my been God. going from scene to scene and unique and colorful and very, uh, ex- you know, exciting ways. I were like, yeah, this is definitely an Elvis movie at some point. You know, like it is the editing of the scenes in itself felt like a performance. And mm-hmm. I really like that. Um, but another thing, and this was something I was worried about, and I mentioned it to you uh, in the car when we were heading back, was I was kind of concerned, but I'm happy that they actually dived a bit deep into his inspirations of mm. music and rock and roll and how yep. that was coming from the African-American community, you, you know, back then. And you and you actually f- were in that moment with him, which I really liked. I didn't expect him to go that much into it, but um, I really like that they actually delved into that, and you kind of got to see where his mentality was at a bit when, in regards to music, in regards to, you know, who he was and how, I guess, the, the media and even society back then kind of perceived music from, unfortunately, Caucasian people and African Americans back then. Mm-hmm. And you can just see the differentiation between that and how, obviously, if Unfortunately, if a white guy did it, they would be more successful than a black guy back then. Yeah, specifically, you know, would uh, would not be successful. And if anything, he probably, you know, much worse things would have happened to them probably, yep. most likely. So mm-hmm. I really liked seeing that they were definitely imbuing that into the story because I I wasn't sure if they were going to gloss over that or anything like that like some other films I've noticed but they 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 went into it and I really like that and it's so Um, important that they did because when you're doing when you're telling the story of like you know an artist of any kind right like it's important to see like where they get their inspirations from and really dive into this so you can get a better understanding of why they make the things that they make and mm -hmm. one thing I will say about this movie in terms of its length, it did feel a bit too long. Like, it definitely dragged at times. Like, I'm not looking back. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure if every scene was essential. And it did feel a bit unfocused at certain points. But again, maybe that's just, like, you know, the nature of a sprawling biopic uh, like this one. Like, when you're just telling someone's life story. But, again, this movie made up for its length 
with its energy. And again, like you said before, that came in large part because of the editing, like the editing from scene to scene, scene c- cut to cut was spectacular. Oh my God. Like that, like by and large, like I will say, this movie was a masterclass in editing. Um, there were certain um, sound syncing issues that I saw that like I didn't, like I heard a line of dialogue and I'm not sure like if, like it actually like, mm-hmm. matched up with like the lips moving. And again, I, I saw that more with um, Colonel Tom Parker more than anything. Like I don't know if it was just that or if just because like how his mouth like maybe the, like didn't move as wide open and it just was hard for me to see like the connection between like his lips moving and the words being said. But all in all, like again, just like especially from like a picture editing point of view, from a pacing point of view, this movie by and large does like a great job. Um, this movie was directed by Baz Luhrmann, who did um, The Great Gatsby. He did The Romeo and Juliet from the 90s, and he did Moulin Rouge. And I've only seen Moulin Rouge, but, like, the camera movements and, like, zany nature of this film kind of reminded me of Moulin Rouge. Okay. Yeah, like, like, and I wanted to build on the aspect of where you said that it was definitely lengthy. I I know for me, I definitely felt the length. It mm-hmm. felt longer than I think it should have. I think there are certain scenes that could have been shortened. At least shortened, maybe not cut out, but just shortened a bit more, made it a bit mm-hmm. tighter. It did feel a bit unfocused at times. But um, I think, like I said, I think the editing alone of it, that energy, that fast-pacedness from certain scenes made up for that. Yeah. Not entirely, but it definitely made up for that. Um, and I really liked, and I got to give it to Tom Hanks, I really liked what they did with Tom Hanks and the Colonel and seeing how much just oh man it's it's that thing where you just if you're in this type of industry be on the lookout you know like really really find the right person don't jump on the first opportunity you see yeah because you want to get ahead focus on the right person get to know them first before you even sign those dotted lines and understand that document you are signing because it can screw you over in the end, and yep. you got you definitely got a sense of that in this movie, and with someone as big and powerful as Elvis, too, right? Like, yeah, that's the thing and that it's really makes you think, too, right? Like someone like him, someone as influential as as him, still got screwed. Like that's crazy when you really think about it. Yeah, it, it really is, and it, it it gives you a certain perspective where when you're again anyone who's up and coming, you, you just got to be a bit cautious about who you unfortunately associate yourself with yep. because of the uh, people, unfortunately, like Colonel, are out there and they're not going to put your best forward. And even one thing throughout the movie that they were acknowledging, even I was questioning, like, yeah, that's a... How, how do you miss that opportunity? Like, something's not right. Even I was like, something's not right. And I couldn't yep. really put it together yet until cert- other sen- scenes, I'm like, oh... Oh man, and I, and I I felt bad for Elvis. Mm-hmm. I felt so bad for that man towards the end, because to, to me the ending or towards that that third act, it felt like everything was going off on all cylinders. Yep. And I really liked it, and I was like, this was intense. This was gripping, and I man, Austin Butler, my God, Jesus, <laughs> yep. he definitely gave a performance of his life. <laughs> yeah. And again, like I feel like this could, people are calling this like a star making performance. I I definitely agree with that sentiment. And again, what better way to give your to um, give yourself a star making performance than to do it as the king of rock and roll, right? You know, this movie like definitely had a lo- has a lot going for it. it. Has a lot going for it. I love the use of of uh, the soundtrack, um, like you know Elvis's music. I love the incorporation of American history into this film, like how like it kind of impacts him, just like impacts everything around him. I feel like this movie found a lot of ways to distinguish itself from musical biopics. Like, I look at this in comparison to a film like, you know, Bohemian Rhapsody. I feel like Bohemian Rhapsody was one of the most overrated films that I've seen in a long time, other than, like, you know, the whole Live Aid sequence at the end. But that's, obviously, that's a discussion for another day. But I do feel like, again, this movie found a way to be very much its own thing. Yep, absolutely. So I definitely recommend this movie to a lot of people to go see it. I'm not sure if I recommend them to sit in a theater for two hours and 49 minutes, but <laughs> uh, 
Oh, two hours and forty minutes, but yeah. you know what? It was still a really good movie. Yeah, <laughs> just to still, say was, the least. It was still a great time. It was very, very energetic and very, very entertaining. If it wasn't for those two factors alone, this movie wouldn't sell yeah. nearly as well as it does. Yeah, absolutely. So I definitely recommend people to see this movie at some point. Yeah, you, know, you know, I'm just saying, you know, like that runtime. You can feel, you'll feel it, <laughs> mm-hmm. yep. but um, but yeah, I definitely recommend it. Had a good time, lots of energy. It felt like the concert. I was in a concert too, and yep. again, that's what you you should want to edit oh, an Elvis movie like that, and I I love that. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, definitely recommend it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Really good, solid performances, great music, great soundtrack. Just, just kiss. Mwah. Yep. Yep. Yeah, for sure. So uh, for all of you, you know, what are your thoughts on the Elvis film? Is it good enough for the king of rock and roll, or is it just another generic biopic film? Leave your thoughts wherever it is that you can. 